Hi everyone, so in this video we're going to talk about how to draw simple Lewis structures based on a certain established sequence of steps, okay? So if you want to do, draw Lewis structures for molecules that you have, and we're going to do several examples of this, you basically have to follow the steps that are listed here, and this is also in your one of your lecture slides, okay? The first thing to do is just to add all the valence electrons from all the atoms in the molecule or ion. And the important thing here to note is that if you have an anion, you're going to actually add the electrons that correspond to the ionic charge. So, for example, if you have an A- minus at the end, you're going to add one more electron to the count of valence electron. If you have, on the other hand, a cation, then you're going to subtract the electrons corresponding to ionic charge. Okay? And then the first thing you want to do is draw something called the skeletal structure. Okay? This is basically the simplest structure you can have where each of the uh, atoms are connected by single bonds. Now the very important thing here is to identify an atom that would serve as so-called central atom. And the central atom is basically a non-hydrogen atom that are surrounded by atoms of higher electronegativity. In other words, the central atom itself would have the lowest electronegativity, right? So lowest electronegativity is the central atom, okay? And so you need to think back to your electronegativity rule uh, and trend and try to come up with a way to figure out which atom is going to be a central atom. Once you draw the single bonds, once you have your skeletal or your framework structure right here, then the next thing is just to make sure that you satisfy the octet rule for all the atoms that you have. Just make sure that all the electrons are arranged around atoms, either as lone pairs or bonding pairs, in su such a way that everybody satisfies the octet rule. Now, a key strategy to do this is that when you run out of electrons before each of the atom has an octet, the only thing you need to do is move the lone pairs so you can create double or triple bonds, okay? Now, we're not going to talk about exceptions yet, but as you'll see in the next video, there are exceptions to the octet rule and we have to account for them. Right now, we're just going to talk about things that satisfy the octet rule. Okay, so to actually do this example, so I might, I'm just going to go through example number five in your lecture slide to show you how you can draw the simple lowest structure. And this really kind of covers the three different uh, type of situations you can have, which is the CF4, the atom, and then you have the cation, the anion, okay? So let's try that first. We'll start with the CF4, okay? For CF4, then what you want to do first is just count the valence, okay? So count valence. And the way you do that is you're just adding all the valence electrons in all the atoms you have. So in the, what the first thing you're going to start with is carbon. How many valence electrons does carbon have? Well, carbon is in group 4A, so automatically it tells you that it has four valence electron, okay? And then you need to look at the fluorine. Well, fluorine is in group 7A, so then each fluorine has seven electrons, seven valence electron. Since we have four fluorines, that's going to be four times seven electron, which is 28. So then when you add everything together, you get 32 valence electron. So in other words, for this structure, CF4, you're going to need to figure out a way to place all 32 electrons around the entire structure, okay? That might seem intimidating, but actually it's not that difficult because the next step you're going to do is draw your central atom and then draw single bonds from the central atom. First off, you need to figure out which one is going to be central atom. You have two choices here. You either have carbon to be central atom or fluorine to be central atom. If we go back to our rules from earlier, Remember that the central atom is a non-hydrogen atom and is surrounded by atoms of higher electronegativity. So in other words, the central atom itself has the lowest electronegativity. So if you compare carbon and fluorine, you remember the trend for electronegativity goes increasing that way, which means that fluorine is the most electronegative, so it can't be the central atom. In other words, carbon has to be the central atom. Okay. So once you determine what the central atom is, and it's the question of drawing single bonds from the central atom to all the terminal atoms, okay? So then we would call, before I move on further, just terminology, this would be called the central atom 
and all four of the fluorines would be referred to as outer or terminal atoms. Okay? And all four of these would be called out. Okay? All right. Now, let's think about uh, electrons now. Once you do this, what you have to do first is just figure out how many electrons are left. Okay? Remember that each pair that are used here in the bond represents a pair of electron, right? So in other words, you've used eight of them so far, right? Because you have one, two, three, and four, so then you use it eight electrons already. Initially, I have 32. Now I need to subtract eight electrons from it. So what's left is 24 electrons. That's what I need to distribute over the structure. If you look carefully, the carbon already has an octet, okay? It already has eight electrons, so there's really no way to place the, uh, the electrons on the carbon anymore. However, it's pretty clear from here that each of the fluorine doesn't have an octet, and so the easy way is to place the lone pair electrons, these 24 electrons, until it makes all the fluorines octet. Now, if you have only two electrons per fluorine, then you need to put in six, right? So you do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm using this purple color here to denote my lone pair. And then lastly, I have it right here. Okay? So that would basically make my CF4 molecule. And as you can count now, 24, I made it in 4. Every one of them gets 6, so that's 6 times 4, which is 24, and it exactly uses up all my electrons. So in other words, this would be the lowest structure for CF4. You also see that all the Fs have octet in this case, pretty clearly seen right here. Okay, so that's for, uh, example number one. Let's now go to example number two, which is NO+. So we follow the same step again like earlier, the first thing being to figure out valence electron. And I'm going to go a little faster here because we already know that nitrogen is group, what, 5A, which means that it's going to have 5 electron. And then oxygen is group 6A, so it's going to have 6 electron. Now, a very important thing here is the positive sign. The positive charge means in lowest structure we would subtract one electron from it, so then we were left with the 10 electron is what we have. This is an example of a structure that there is no particular central atom because you only have two atoms, so then they have to be bonded to each other. Okay, there's no central atom in this case. The question is, how do we place the other electrons? Okay, so if you think about it, I've used two electrons in my bond, so I'm left with eight electrons that I need to place. Okay. Let's try to place these electrons around the oxygen. If I put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then I have an octet around the oxygen, right? You can see it right here. That's an octet for the oxygen, okay? So that means that I have placed six electrons, so I have two left because I have eight total. So I'm going to put the other two right here on the nitrogen. But there's a clear problem right here because my nitrogen doesn't have an octet, right? Now, if you go back to the rules earlier, whenever you have issues that you run out of electron, this is where I'm highlighting right here, rule number four, if you're running out of electron, then what you need to do is you need to move your lone pairs to create double or triple bonds, okay? And that's what I'm going to do right here. In this case, I'm going to take this guy and move it here and see what happens. My structure now becomes this. And what you see, I hope, is that you can see that the oxygen doesn't really change. It still has eight electron. However, what has happened is that the nitrogen now has six electron, which is improved from the earlier situation where it only has four electrons, but it's still not octet. So then we need to fix this. And of course, the fix is to move another electron, one of these guys right here. So then your final structure looks like this with a pair on the nitrogen and a pair on the oxygen. And you can see pretty clearly, hopefully here, that this is an octet and the oxygen is also an octet. Okay. Now to complete the drawing, the correct way to draw an ion in a lowest structure is to put it in brackets and then to put the positive sign on the outside or the charge on the outside. Okay. 
So the last question is on NO minus. Here I'm going to go rather quickly. NO minus, the valence is you have five electrons from the nitrogen, you have six electrons from the oxygen, and again, as a reminder, here you have a negative one charge, which means you're adding one electron, so then you're left with 12 electrons that you need to distribute. Again, this is what you're going to have to start with, so then you subtract two electrons that's from the bond, so you're left with 10 electrons that you need to distribute, okay? So then I'm going to do that. Let's put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That makes an octet for the oxygen. That leaves me four more electrons, so I'm going to put four right here, but you can clearly see that the issue here is that the nitrogen only has six electrons, okay? So that can't be the correct structure, but of course the way we can do this, fix this problem, is to take one of these electrons and move it here. Now notice that I don't want to take one of these and move it there. That would not be right, okay? Because if you do that, you're not going to improve your situation. As so I'm going to move the oxygen electron, and so what I get in the end looks something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And as you can see here, I can count that this has an octet, and then I can look at the nitrogen that also has an octet, okay? To complete my drawing, I would then put in this bracket and the negative sign outside.